Hello guys, and welcome back to a new episode of the Tower Defense series. Um, so, in the last episode, we made the game mode show. As you can see here, uh, there is now a normal attack, and when we go into it, we can select the game mode, and it shows up here, as you can see. And, yeah, um, we can also start this, and you can see that we can uh, select it. Um, the only thing that is missing are the stages. So you can select which stage you want and which act you want. Just the typical tower defense game. So we are actually going to do this. So for our world, we have the grassland world with an image and a name. And in here, in those stages, we have all the different stages set up here. And yeah, all of these stages, we don't actually need an image and a name because, of course, the stages are going to be named Act 1, Act 2 and stuff. And we also don't need a color. We pretty much only need... Um, so for the stage one, we got this to have a um, reward, which is a table. Um, yeah, we can just put a table and so we can use the rewards table and initialize this here and put it equal to a table and then essentially put all of our rewards that we want to uh, like give players in this stage we can put them here so let's just put this here and here and then this is going to be our stage layout so we want to have six different stages. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it four more times. So we have six different stages because that's typical for anime tower defense games. Uh, every world has six stages. Uh, we have them all lined up here. So that's exactly what we need. Um, yeah. Right, that's the layout, but we are actually not going to implement this in today's episode. Rather, we are going to make some UI that we can use in the next episode to finally display our hotbar. Because if we join in our current game, you will be able to see that in the inventory it displays our equipped units, but it doesn't show them at the bottom of our screen. If we equip a, uh, like another unit, you can see we can currently equip like a lot of units. I think we can even equip like, no, we can equip like nine units. Um, so let's actually shrink this down to only let us equip uh, like six units maybe. So let's see what we got this. I think we we did this somewhere in the um, template. So let's go to our modules. Let's go to our template. And we can see that max units is actually five. But it's not really working that well. Um, let's actually reset our data. Let's change the data store. Let's play again and let's see what's causing this issue. Because if we just summon some units. Okay, it didn't clear our data. Oh yeah, because we have a um, different data store for them. So what we actually need to do is we need to go to our unit save. And we need to change the save here. And now, once we go in and we summon a few times, you can see that we have fresh units. Now, when we equip all of those, so you can equip four. So we got five equipped now, and we can't equip the sixth one. But the problem is when we rejoin, this table isn't getting loaded, so we can keep equipping more. So when we go in here and we try to equip this, it now works. So this isn't good. Now we can equip like five more. So when I just equip all of them and now this, and now I can't equip this one, as you can see, because I equipped five more and then I'm going to rejoin. I can equip five more as you like. Yeah. So that's the big problem. So now we want to get rid of this. So we want to essentially find our event. Let me see. 
so where do we equip our units actually? Let me see, it's a unit save and we got the equipped units and we are going to, oh yeah. Where do we even check if we have max units? Because this is very important. So let me go to our template. Let me get the max units and let me search for it. So we only check this in the unit module. And the unit equipped is actually a table that gets redone every single time. So what we want to do actually is we want to check for all the units which are equipped. So we actually don't want to check unit equipped, but we want to rather check the hashtag of items in our player's data. So when we go in our player, you can see that we have an equipped units folder here with all of these elements. So we don't want this to be more than five. So what we want to do is we essentially want to check if the hashtag of player dot equipped units get children is bigger than the max units. And then we actually want to do um, plus one is bigger than the max units because of course we're going to add this in later. So this makes sense. So now when we go and equip a unit, let's actually unequip all of them. So the unequip all isn't working yet. Uh, we will also fix that. So let's unequip all of our units and then let's try this again. So when we equip a unit, you can see that it's checks if the hashtag of our equipped units is there so we can actually try to warn this so we can see if it actually works so let's actually warn warn this so this should now give us the number of units which are equipped after the current thing so now it's two now it will be three now it will be four now it's going to be five and now i can't equip anymore as you can see because of course i only am able to equip five units and even if i rejoin because that's of course the crucial part and i'll rejoin and i try to equip another unit you can see that it doesn't work it doesn't work so that's very good but so we cannot equip more units than we would be able to now for the unequip all you can see it errors with attempt to index null with UUID and that is because there is no unit table for the template because we essentially loop through all of our buttons but we are not excluding the template and the template of course doesn't have a unit table one way of fixing this is we can just do if not unit table then return and that's just going to fix all of our issues pretty much, I think. We now hit unequip all. It now just doesn't do anything. That's great. Um, okay, let's, let's try doing something else. So when we go to our unit module, let's get rid of this any, uh, again. And... Let's just make a function for unequip all. Yeah, let's just make a function. So function unit module dot unequip all with which we just need the player, is a player of course, is then gonna just do we even have this? Yeah, we have unequip all units. Oh, we actually have unequip all units. Why don't we call unequip all units? God, that's actually weird. Um, so we call the 
on the cube units. So let me search what we call this. We call this in here. On the unequip. Okay, so we fire the unequip unit event instead of the unequip event. That's our problem. So let's go to our clients. Let's go to our scripts. Let's go to our inventory. And let's search the unequip unit button, which is unequip units. And that's our event. And we actually want to get the unequip events. Which is going to be equal to unequip. And that's going to be unequip all. Then you can see the unequip button is the inventory reference to unequip. So this is going to be our unequip all button. Now you can see our warning appeared here. And now this is going to be our unequip all button. And then we are just going to fire unequip all. And then we should be good to go. So now let's try this out. So when we go to our inventory and we equip a unit, we press unequip all and it unequips them. As you can see, it unequips all of the units. So now we can finally make the UI. And then in the next episode, we will implement this UI. So let's go to our main, where we also have our inventory. And of course, our view, which we also have we started the view yet, or do we want to implement it? Let me actually see if yeah, we have implemented it yet. Okay, that's cool. Okay, also, that's one problem. That shouldn't be happening. Okay, so let's try to fix this too. So when we click on a unit, the unit frame, um, selected frame is going to be visible. When we set all of the selected frames equal to false. So let's see. In our inventory, we have a container. So we want to actually get unit frame object in I pairs, and we want to if you want to do pairs, and then we want to do um, actually not the parent, but just the container, and yeah, the template has of course a unit frame, and so every unit frame object in the container, which is a template. Um, you want to do um, if unit frame uh, dot unit frame and uh, this is a um, image button and if it finds a first child selected frame then you want to check if this isn't the template um, and then we just want to make this visible false. And this should finally be working now too. So let's try this out. Okay, unit frame is not a valid member of your grid layout. Of course, we want to check if it's an image button beforehand. Uh, so we want to check if it is, if unit frame object isn't, uh, object is a frame then we need to do if not we need to return or and to continue actually continue not return but continue so now when we go ahead and we press on something you can see that it also works now but it's also a big w and yeah this should also remove some bugs from your game so now we can actually stop with the UI because of course it works now, as you can see. Uh, yeah, the view is pretty wanky. We could change the thing, of course, because right now it doesn't look that great. I'm just going to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, we will get to that. So now we can start with the UI finally. Um, so inside our inventory you want to just add a hotbar just called hotbar 
and we want to move it all the way down here. You can just scale it a bit and just position it however you want. Then we are going to add a UI list layout in here. And we are going to make this horizontal. And we are going to make the horizontal alignment in the center and the vertical alignment in the center as well. Then we are going to add, we are going to add a image button. We're going to make the size like 170, which is reasonable. Let's make it 160. Let's go to our plugin and convert this. You can of course just copy my values. Then let's duplicate this button six times. So we have six buttons. Let's go to our URL list. Okay, sorry. Um, let's go to our list layout. And then actually just uh, change the padding a bit. So we do this and you can see it now has nice spacing. You can actually get rid of the vector transparency here. And now we have our hotbar pretty much. And as you can see in our inventory, this consists of a template with a unit frame inside. Uh, we are just going to copy this unit frame and we are going to paste it into every single one of those. And as you can see, it looks exactly the same. So then you want to change every single one of our Im image buttons. I want to change the background transparency to one. We want to change the image to nothing. And then we can, I think, also remove the padding because of course it's going to be looking good can do like zero 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 five yeah or zero zero one this is looking good so far then you want to start at the left and rename this button to one and change its layout order to one then the next button change the layout order to two and change its name to two and so on let's just rename them to three and then four and then five and then lastly number six so now once we have all of them that is our ui so in the next episodes we are actually going to populate this ui so we now go in game, we can see everything we fixed and achieved today. So as you can see, we made the whole hotbar. And in the next episode, we are going to display this unit also on here. And if we were to equip a second unit, this unit would now be displayed here as well. So we fixed a lot of bugs today, being that the stats don't show here, like don't show anywhere else, they are not needed. And we also fixed the unequip all button, which also gets rid of the hover. And yeah, the search bar doesn't work yet. But we can also do that in the next episode. So, thank you guys for watching. And see you in the next video. Peace. And also, if you want to help me out, just consider liking and subscribing um and yeah thank you for the support and i'm going to see you in the next video